Okay, today we're playing a game on Rialto, we are in the Platinum SR range, and we will be playing Zanyada the entire way through. And our current team composition is Reinhardt, Zarya, McCree, Hanzo, Anna, and Zanyada. Worth pointing out, this is pre-Anna buff, because at time of speaking, the Anna buff went live literally today. So there will be no great saving somebody, healing them up to max HP with the nano boost plays today. No, sir. Which is pretty sick, by the way. But it takes some time to internalize, because I've played Reinhardt today, been nano boosted at like really low health and been like fuck I'm still about to die I'm still about to die and then like two seconds later I've been like wait no I'm full health now shit right let's go takes a little while to get used to that one it is very nice though anyway there's not much to say about the team comp because we've got all the classic fixtures the Zarya the Hanzo the Zenyatta so we're just gonna start the game so we must defend Rialto first. As you can see, this isn't a super long game. So who gets wrecked is the, the question. So they've got a, a Widowmaker, as we can see by the shots going past our head. So I would not keep peeking this way because Widowmaker clearly already has it in for us because she's already shot at us a couple of times. That was not far back enough. That's going to be back too far. But... Uh, uh, there we go. She's already shot at us. So peeking out again is very scary because she's go probably going to try and shoot us again, given that we are Zenyatta. There we go. She tried to shoot us again. Now we're being dove at by the D.Va as well. We've come back out into Widowmaker's line of sight and been shot by Widowmaker again and then jumped down off of the high ground at low health right in front of Reaper. Just try and stay out of Widowmaker's line of sight as Zenyatta. Unless you're going to try and like peek her with the right click after you get this quarter on her or something like that, you know? That's fair enough. Or the barrage, it's uh, orb volley. There we go. I'm tr try, I try so hard to call these things by their names, but anytime it's click, left click or right click based, I'm always like, yeah, you know, you know the one. So if you're not going to try doing something like that, you don't want to poke out in front of the Widowmaker because, look, Widowmaker is a, like, Zenyatta, rather, is a floating box, literally, in terms of his hitbox. He's very easy to hit, and if you just move him back and forth on top of a balcony like that, it's literally just like shooting a duck at a fairground. Like, you don't need to make it easier for the Widowmaker, just trying to avoid line of sight. Generally good advice for everyone, but Zenyatta's already easy enough to kill. We don't need to make it easier for him. So Widowmaker's over there now, as we can see. Could have put the, if we had put the Discord Orb on her before we did that, we would have actually probably killed her, because we actually just hit her a few times right there. And we can see that she's over there, put the Discord on her. She, yeah, she's basically dead. So if we put the Discord on her first, she would have been like, fully dead. Well, we might not have hit her if we took the time to spend the Discord, put the Discord on her, I suppose. So now we're just being mad greedy, and we've strayed completely out into the open. We got like, out into the open space here. There's not that many people around to shoot at us at this point, but there is still, you know, the Widowmaker. And the Zanyata was right there as well. We just suddenly stray completely out from cover, which isn't super recommended maneuver. Especially not as somebody who is easy to kill, like Zanyata. So, we've managed to kill off their momentum, surprisingly enough, considering how badly it was going right at the start. And now we actually have discard, uh, Transcendence almost built up, almost a Discord built up. Which, I mean, you know... Discord is probably strong enough to be that. I remember back when Zenyatta was really bad, right when the game first launched, there was this idea for a buff to Transcendence floating around that was one of the most lud ludicrous suggestions for game balance I've ever seen in my entire life. And the suggestion was that you activate Transcendence, and at the time it didn't have the speed boost or anything on it, so the idea was just you activate Transcendence and you're moving around at like regular Zenyatta speed, but... To compensate for that, it would put a Harmony Orb on every member of your team, and a Discord Orb on every member of the enemy team. And that was actually one of the most ridiculous things I'd ever seen in my life. It was just like, there's, I can't imagine in my mind a buff more ridiculous, other than like maybe something like Earth Shatter just ignores geometry, just hits you wherever you are if you're in front of Reinhardt, something like that, right? It's along that level of ridiculousness. Oh yeah, just put fucking six Harmony Orbs and six Discord Orbs out there while I'm also still using Transcendence. It's a bit overkill, isn't it? You're like healing, what, like 350 health per second or something like that at that point, and they're all taking 50% like more damage? I couldn't believe it. I was like, what kind of absolute, ma absolute madman 
thinks that that's okay. Anyway, doesn't really, it's just a short game, okay? Look, we're gonna we'll talk about some foolishness around here. So we're in a really scary spot because we're just kind of hanging out next to the trees. And there's cover around us, sure enough, you know, we got like the little walls and everything and the payloads here. But, it's also really easy to get to us, they can just kind of like run at us, right? Fortunately, they're electing to run that way, which is very obliging of them to not actually try and kill us. Because they could just like run right at us. And then we've got to go pretty far to get to safety. We've got to go like all the way back across the courtyard to get back to safety. And don't forget they still have that uh, Widowmaker as well, and we're not exactly hiding behind great cover. If Widowmaker jumped up on here, on here, if I point at the right fucking monitor, she'd be able to shoot us. Or, she could shoot us from like right there, also. So, we're standing in a really scary and exposed location, then we get hit by the Earth Shatter, which honestly, might have saved us from Widowmaker? Because suddenly we drop down below the staircase and she can't really see us anymore. Then when she, we stand back up, she tries to shoot us, but she misses. And now she's dead, don't have to worry about that one anymore, but we're like standing out in a really scary location. And that's basically the overarching moral of this game, is we're standing in scary places and we keep peeking Widowmakers. Um, not to sound like a broken record or anything, but survival is a pretty important aspect of all supports, but particularly for Zenyatta, where he is so very, very easy to kill. Positioning is a pretty big deal for Zenyatta. Positioning is the hardest skill for Zenyatta, I would say. You might say, well, aim, I guess, but positioning tends to be more complicated than that. Especially when you're playing someone like Zenyatta in such a fast pace and aggressive game as Overwatch, right? Things are moving quite quickly, including the enemy team, and you don't move very quickly. And you want to be away from the scary people that are trying to murder you. And they will be trying to murder you. I remember when the uh, when you were also used to just focus the mercy to disregarding all else, but now it's like, fucking get the Zenyatta before you can use Transcendence so we can just win the team fight. It's a lot like Mercy when you think about it, isn't it? Because um, you had to kill Mercy before you'd made the big Graviton play, because otherwise Mercy would bring everyone back to life again if you didn't catch Mercy. And now you gotta kill Zenyatta before you make the big Graviton play, because otherwise no one dies. Or get him to use it, or you know, more realistically drop him low, make him panic ult, and then use your big ultimate after it runs out. So that's happening over there. Widowmaker very obligingly missed us. By not much. Yes. Very close, very close. Very scary. And by very just barely missed us again. And by not by very scary I also mean not even close, baby. Oh, he's spinning over here. We're gonna use transcendence, fair enough response. Uh that's the whole point of transcendence. I don't believe Do they have a Zarya? I don't believe they do. I think they had their Diva Reinhardt, right? Um, well, the other, yeah, there's, there's Reinhardt. So we don't have to worry about blocking a Graviton or anything like that. Um, because that, that would be the fear right now if they had a Zarya, is, well, I just had to use Transcendence for the Reaper, so now if they come in with Graviton, I can't use it for that. Which is uh, sort of the idea when playing against Zenyatta, is, you know, he can't block all of the ultimates. We could have put the Discord Orb on that person right there. We would have interrupted our reload to do so, but we aren't going to be doing much right now anyway, so we might as well have put the Discord Orb on that person. It'll at least make them have to stay out of line of sight for a little bit, if nothing else. But people hate waiting for Discord to actually fall off of them. They've always got a peak. They've always got a peak when they got the Discord Orb on them, haven't they? I do. I don't want to wait. That's why I just play like Moira and Bridget. It doesn't matter if you got the Discord Orb on you, because you can either put your shield up or get it off of you. Easy peasy. Um, so, anyway, I, this is, already this video is going to end up being longer than the entire video, like, not even finished the first round yet. So here comes uh, Winston, we're still standing in, like, a scary location, like, yeah, we can shoot down this alleyway and all that good stuff, but, like, as soon as the enemy team actually starts showing their faces and, like, approaching us, we don't want to be over here anymore. This is a scary place to be. Because you can be threatened from, like, basically everywhere on the map. Except, like, this wall. But, like, every other angle is scary to you. And you gotta go so far to get over to safety, which is the tunnel. 
So like, all right, fair enough. We come over here because there's not much to do and we want to shoot down the alleyway. All right, fair enough. As soon as they start pushing towards you, you got to start retreating away at that point, like back over to actual safety. Because if nothing else, you want as many people on your team between you and the enemy team as possible, as like any kind of supports. Um, I'm going to start uploading my own games more frequently, and I have a game as mercy on junker town to show you and so the what always bothers me and you know it's junker town so you know there's a bastion strat going on what always bothers me about that kind of strat is that the mercy always sits like right up on top of the payload basically right next to the bastion that's a really bad idea you're sitting right next to the thing that's going to be having the most attention drawn to it what you should really do is stand further back from the payload because your tether is still 15 meters long so you can be standing quite far away and then you have the whole cluster of the payload between you and the enemy team because suddenly like they got to kill the bastion first they aren't just going to march their way past the bastion on the payload to try and kill you so as long as you're acknowledging like line of sights from the long range heroes as well and you just sit further back from the payload it's really hard for you to die actually because there's five people between you and them and one of them's bastion so but the, they always sit like right up on top of the payload i get it everyone wants to be on the pirate ship there's gold on the pirate ship but like if you sit a little bit further back you're safe just try and like if you're playing a support good rule of thumb is just keep as many people on your team between you and the enemy team as possible because that's just more people they have to go through if nothing else right and they might like jump over them or something like that yeah but if you're just off to the side of it jesus christ you in enough servers but if you're just like off to the side of the enemy team they just run at you right try and keep your team between you and the enemy team um what a what a rambling and off-topic point right there. I'm, talk I'm going to talk about a game that you're not going to see for like three days to illustrate my points. Talk about, like, that's talking in some abstract terms right there. And the moral was just basically keep your team between you and the enemy team. That's a nice, that's a much more succinct way of putting it, but I'm not really about making succinct and coherent points. That's not who I am rambling opt off topic d discussions is what i'm about so we are, have to attack and as you can see we're already doing better than they were certainly we've gone off into a scary location because we really want to try and kill that farah widow's been shooting at us over in this tunnel the entire time so really we want to keep something between us and the widow maker at all times we're moving into the person that we're shooting at right here which is a bad habit because us moving towards this mercy doesn't really do anything for us it makes mercy a little bit easier to hit i guess but like we're already really fucking close to her right and there's a widow right around this wall right so all this does really is bring us a little bit more into line of sight for Widowmaker. just like moving into the person that you're shooting at is a bad habit for basically all heroes but particularly for someone like zenyatta who wants to be as far away from the enemy team as is feasibly possible you don't want to be moving into them the idea is instead just to get better at shooting people from further away. And then, like, he's a pretty easy projectile hero to hit people with. Like, his projectiles are really fast. He's almost hit scan. Not quite. Like, you can still definitely see the arc the projectile goes through. But they're pretty fucking fast, right? Like, he is... He's got some fast projectiles. They're only just barely not hit scan. Got booped off the map. Feels bad, man. I look forward to the day that I see a highlight, which is just that a wrecking ball swings off this building and then just pushes the entire enemy team off the other bridge. It's going to happen one day. By the way, here's a, here's a hot tip for wrecking ball in the early days of his actual release into the game. Grappling onto something in the middle of the objective or onto the payload and just spinning around the thing constantly is a surprisingly obnoxious tactic. If they have hard crowd control, they can just fuck you. But that's just... That's Hammond in general. Okay? Like, that's just how he is. So... But it's uh, surprisingly annoying. Like, just like Temple of Anubis' first checkpoint, right? You got the, the... The little fountain in the center of the objective. Just the Hammond spinning around that constantly. Fuck, that's annoying. Um... 
I'm, I, I feel like calling it the blender strat, but then I also think that sounds more akin to someone like Reaper at the same time. Um, helicopter strat, something like that, but there's only one blade. I don't know. It's really annoying, regardless. Um, also, just like smacking into the enemy team constantly gets you a lot of ult charge. And uh, particularly if you're like... I'm in a higher SR bracket and people are still bad at killing you. Like, if you're playing in like fucking silver, gold, plat, what have you, you can probably just be spinning off that payload for like fucking 10 minutes and they won't do anything about it. So we, there's like honestly not been that much hard. Like we've already basically covered all the points that are going to be made in this video, which is watch out for fucking line of sight. You know, we use Transcendence right there, fair enough, they don't have uh, a big ult combo we're looking to deny, but then we just kind of get killed by Dragon Strike, which is sad, but we've won the game behind it anyway, so. Great. Awesome. And, you know, they didn't have a Zarya, I don't think, so. Uh, just using it to try and make sure we win that fight, which we were winning at the time, is fair enough, because we would like that to be the last fight. So we make, might as well just use our ultimate to make sure it is the last fight. Um... If you can realistically win the game in one fight, don't bother holding on to your ult if you can realistically still win the fight. Like obviously if it's like in 1v5, don't use the ult, right? Don't take it to the absolute extreme end of that. But like, if you can reasonably win the game in one team fight, drop all of your ults on that team fight. Like just try and win that one team fight. Cause I, oh, what if I lose? Then I end up not having my ultimate. Just you. Just try and use it to make sure you win the fight. If you can end the game in one fight, end the game in one fight, you might as well drop all six ultimates on that. Um, just, just make sure. Um, anyway, so yeah, basically the morals of this story, the moral of the today's game was watch out for line of sight, um, and try to think about where you're standing. Like, how far do I have to get back to safety if I get into trouble? Can the enemy just kind of run at me? Do I have people between me and them that can protect me if they try and rush at me? You know, that kind of thing. All very important for supports to think about in general, but particularly for Zenyatta, who is so very fragile and so very easy to kill. And has such an important ultimate, right? Like, if you end up in trouble and you end up almost dying, your options are die and not have Transcendence there for the fight, or use Transcendence there in the fight, but they will probably drop their ultimates on you right after it ends, so... Positioning is really important for Zenyatta because you really don't want to have Transcendence forced out of you because that's why you're picking Zenyatta at the end of the day, right? Like, the Discord Orb is great and all that. Harmony Orb is great for flanking heroes, things like that. But, like, the big thing about Zenyatta is that Transcendence it is the only buffer you have sometimes between winning and losing a fight. There are just certain things that if they happen to you and you don't have Transcendence, you lose the team fight. So positioning's really, really important for Zenyatta because you gotta hold on to Transcendence for the key moment in the team fight. Um, don't get picked off by a Widowmake or just get, get jumped on and have your ultimate forced out of you. Just be safe. And, you know, sometimes that's going to mean you end up doing less damage. Hey, if you don't die, though, that's the important thing. Because if you're dead, you can't use your ultimate. So, one day. I'll bet one day there's going to be a hero in the game that can use their ultimate while they're dead. One day that's going to come. But today is not that day. So, thank you very much for watching. If you did, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm more than happy to answer. If you haven't already, you can join our Discord and ask questions more directly and have a conversation about them. Or just shitpost with us. And I hope you found the video helpful.